Neck turning is a subject that a lot of people ask about, but I haven't really done much of it lately. Now, if you have a reduced neck chamber common in calibers like 6 PPC, there really isn't a question. You need to neck turn the cases to safely function. But what about the average guy that's just trying to eke out every last bit of accuracy he can? Does the investment in time and equipment even make sense? I thought the first step to answer this question is to see mechanically what is really going on. Does it make your seating forces any more consistent? And can it result in better concentricity? When I polled the audience, 55% of you guys said that you were interested in learning more about neck turning. Now for the 22% of you guys that think it's a waste of time, stick around, maybe I'll give you some ammunition to argue about later. Whether you're thinking about case neck turning or not, one test I think everyone should do is take a fired piece of brass and drop a projectile through the case neck and see that it drops easily. Don't do this on a case that's been through your wet tumbler, just a stock fired case, and make sure it drops easily into the case. Assuming it does, there's no need to turn your case necks. You may want to think about it for the hopes of more consistency, but it probably isn't mandatory. If it doesn't drop easily, case neck turning might be something you should think about. If you've been around the channel a while, you'll know that I would rather give you guys data than my opinion. So for today's video, we're going to look mechanically of the differences between neck turn brass and stock brass and see what's going on. We're going to be looking at seating force as well as concentricity. The cases we're talking about today are from Hornady and 6.5 Creedmoor, and I turned these a while ago. In fact, right now, the best I know, they either have four or five firings. These cases were turned on my Hornady neck turning tool. The only goal of turning the case necks was to make them as consistent as possible. So remove all of the high spots and have all the cases have a uniform case neck thickness across the lot. So once we came up with a minimum case dimension, all the cases were turned to that same neck dimension. Now these cases start off roughly with a case neck thickness of around 14 thousandths. And now to get them trued, it's about 12 and a half thousandths across the lot. Again, this was only done to eliminate the variation of the case neck thickness in each piece of brass. Now these graphs are going to show the average seating force for 10 pieces of stock brass versus 10 pieces of neck turn brass. In case you're not familiar with these graphs, this is the graph of the total force during the seating process. The initial seating force is when the projectile starts to seat in the case, and the bump at the higher end of the curve is where the projectile has passed the case neck shoulder junction inside the case neck. This probably isn't earth shattering information, but I would expect losing a thousandth and a half of material, which is a little over 10% of the total case thickness, it would have really made more of a difference here. But looking at the graph, you can see that there are larger peaks during the start and end of the seating process, but in the center, the force curves are almost identical. There is a higher seating force and the projectile starts to seat, as well as possibly there might be a donut starting to build up, giving us this bump at the end of our stock brass. So that is just a seating force compared, but what about the variation? Did the brass improve or did we make it worse? This is the standard deviation of the seating force of 10 cases each of stock as well as neck turn brass. And even though the overall seating forces are about the same, there is overall less case to case variation in the neck turned brass. So with our not so high quality brass and our not so high end case neck turner, we were able to make a measurable difference in the case to case variation. But what about our concentricity? Did our concentricity improve? Well, I measured 25 cases turned and 25 cases stock with a projectile seated in the case. And it's clear that the neck turn brass performs better. The average total indicator runout of the stock brass was just under two thousandths of runout, but the turn brass was just over one and a quarter. But what about the extremes? Well, that's where we can really see the difference. The max total indicator runout on our stock brass was four thousandths of an inch, whereas the worst case on our turn brass was two thousandths. Standard deviation of the stock brass was about a thousandth, where the turn brass was 0.7. Looking at this data, it may be time to give neck turning another look. Though I really think you're going to have to have the skills and the equipment to see the difference on target. One thing that has really improved the concentricity of my reloads are these bushings from Short Axe and Customs. Check out this video right here to learn more about them. And until next week, stay safe in small groups.